Whatever I see, I remember yo. If you remember me. Hello friends, welcome to Seven Minute Study. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the compiler construction tools that is the Lex tool, which is also known as the Lexical Analyzer Generator. As Lex is a tool or a language that is used to generate a lexical analyzer. A lexical analyzer specifies regular expressions and these regular expressions are used in order to represent the patterns for the tokens. So for a Lex tool, the input would be the specification of a regular expression and the output would be in the form of tokens. So in order to create a lexical analyzer using Lex language, we are going to follow three steps or uh, three processes which can be depicted using the following diagrams. So first the source program in the form of lex.l all or the l is uh, with the dot l extension is sent to the lex compiler which ge which then generates a predefined c program lex.yy.c the lex.yy.c is going to be dependent on the lex.l even though the dot yy.c is a program that is defaultly generated by the lex, dot com lex compiler this program is going to be dependent on the size of the lex.l so lex.yy.c is then gen sent to the c compiler which generates an object or a binary code from the source code we are getting this binary code this binary code is gen then sent uh, to for the execution as an input stream to generate a sequence of tokens. So from the source program we are going to get a sequence of tokens wherein we have the intermediate object or binary file being generated. So we have a particular structure to be followed in order to write a Lex program which is as follows. The declaration section so a declaration section is very important as it is useful to declare C variables or constants which are being used in the lex.yy.c. So uh, the advantages of adv uh, the declaration section would be such that we can declare constants uh, using const keyword or macros. All right. Even it is useful to define regular expressions uh, which gives the patterns for tokens. So regular expressions would be defined as digit and the, uh, these are the regular expressions for a particular pattern of tokens. And uh, for in order to generate the regular or define the regular expressions, we need not use these predefined uh, structures or predefined uh, representations but instead of uh, we use this in order to uh, like declare the C variables. All right, and for comments, we use this particular format. The translation section would be having some translation rules being specified, which might be depicted as pattern one action, pattern two action, pattern three action. Pattern one is nothing but a particular string. When uh, in a program, we encounter a particular pattern and the pattern is matching with a certain pattern let's say pattern 1 action 1 is executed if the pattern given in the program matches with pattern 2 action 2 is like uh, performed so so on that's what is happening in translation rules we basically translate among the program and find if a string is matching matching with a particular pattern or not so a comments a comments in the whole program can be given like uh, in this pattern just like in uh, in our JSP program. So the third would be the auxiliary functions. Auxiliary functions are nothing but the important or the additional functions which are useful for performing additional or different other tasks. These functions are compiled, compiled separately and loaded with the lexical analyzer. So the declarations and functions which are copied into the lex.yy.c file are per present here. Once the code is written, lex.yy.c may be generated using the command lexfilename.l and compiled as gcc lex.yy.c wherein the auxiliary functions or the additional functions which have been compiled in addition to the uh, lex.yy.c are being uh, like added here. So let's understand this with the following example so that we can uh, easily much more easily uh, classify or understand the Lex tool. So this is a simple program or a simple Lex program to count the number of words in a given input. 
so this form the declaration section of the program and the rules or the translation rules would be defined like this wherein whenever we have uppercase lowercase uh, sorry lowercase uppercase and digits uh, how many how many ever times we are getting so that would be considered as a single word and that time we are going to initialize i to 0 and after initializing i to 0 whenever we encounter each word we are incrementing it by 1 all right whenever we uh, we get a blank space or um, sorry a new line character we are just uh, printing off the number of words and then again initializing or reinitializing i to 0 so we use uh, int yy wrap void uh, return 0 yy wrap is used to uh, be called from yy lex in the main function in order to perform the particular auxiliary functions or the translation rules so here in the main int main function we just call the yy lex will which will just lead us to the yy wrap function and the uh, the execution will be happening there so the output will be uh, like this whenever we give input as hello viewer or two words it would print the number of words and whenever we give welcome to seven minute study that is four words welcome to seven minute and study we get four as four words are present here a state transition diagram would be explained as uh, below Whenever we get um, a word, we are going to the next state uh, from initial to state, final state and uh, we are incre just incrementing the number of uh, words that is i. This is count which is nothing but the count of words. Count of words here is the i variable which also acts as the flag. Alright, so actually uh, in case of translation rules, whenever we have a pattern, it's very important to note that the pattern and action are separated using a blank space or a number of blank spaces. We can even use tab space in between them. So thanks for watching the video. If you have any doubts, please mention in the comment section below or you can personally mail me. Thank you.